As I sit here and ponder upon the recurring links between creativity, depression, and loneliness, I find that the underlying search for truth is the catalyst for all great things that have come about in this world. However true it may be that great people unite other people under a single idea, I would say, that that is merely an after effect, but not a goal for a genius within itself. The genius is generally considered a lonely being in society, which later becomes a loner by choice. Learning to balance time with others in a healthy way, while allowing for great me time for his or her pursuits, who has some kind of dysfunctional behavior according to society, but by which he or she is gifted in a way that is able to transcend the mundane and shine in the extraordinary. So you see, however misfit they may feel throughout their lives, it is not being in crowds what they are particularly interested in, which solidifies the fact that he or she chooses to be what we would call, a loner. After coping for so long and attempting to go with the flow, through seasoned periods of both withdrawal and trying to fit in, the genius finally embraces his or her solitary nature as one of his greatest gifts, for it allows him to focus entirely on the work he or she is called to carry out. According to the dictionary, genius means, exceptional intellectual or creative power or other natural ability. I am using the noun definition because, I believe the adjective is simply an extension of this creative power, but not the trait itself. A genius is a person who has tapped into that ever-flowing creative energy of the universe and seeks either one or various paths to expand from, and allow for creativity to be the leader in his or her pursuits. On the other hand, creativity means the use of imagination or original ideas to create something. To enrich this definition, I would like to share something I read about imagination once, whose author I cannot recall at the moment, it went along the lines of all imagination is past recall. The reason why I am fond of it, is because it really encapsulates the multi-dimensional experience of creativity. Or like an Eisenian, French author, says, we write to taste life twice, in the moment and in retrospect. See. Creativity is like tapping into this infinite, endless space of possibility where anything can be rearranged, recreated, birthed, transmuted, or extinguished, in the case where an old idea is brought back to life, and demystified, up to the point where it loses relevance and purpose, and ceases to exist, because it is no longer functional as a belief, as an idea, as anything. Both Da Vinci and Sherlock whether real or fictional characters, when brought to the screen have been characterized by possessing a multi-dimensional map internally, that they would access in order to sort out problems. Even Einstein saw the flaws of his experiments and its solutions in his head. Plato slept with a steel ball to access this same map, between a state of conscious and unconscious awareness, where the mind became more than a limited expression of logic and entered the profound alleys of intuition, quantum knowing, magic weaving, you name it. So why are geniuses considered lonely beings and why is this a misrepresentation, backed up by their own coping mechanisms, when they haven't yet embraced their unlimited potential? Well, because they need to isolate themselves, at first involuntarily and later, upon awakening, voluntarily, because the work they do, requires them to do so. They cannot allow for distractions, they are breeders, conscious creators. They are so heavily invested in the quest of whatever it is they are working for, that they need a lot of alone time. To access the depths and the core within one's own soul and limitations and transcend that, is not everyone's cup of tea. No one wants to go there voluntarily, it's like an underworld within oneself full of questions, doubts, and hunger that is not easily satisfied. Add to that the terror of the journey itself, fear of judgment, fear of loss, fear of losing oneself on the multi-dimensional universe of existence and not being able to find one's way back home. Only the concept of home for a seeker is constantly changing, so ultimately, it means getting very comfortable in the knowing and the not knowing at the same time. 
sharing this process with someone who is not on the quest or even sharing the idea of it, can be terrifying for most people who are simply comfortable, with their lives being led by something else, other than themselves. The second reason why they appear to be lonely and even family members may secretly label them as depressed or bipolar, is because apart from their lack of connection with the outside world, they are ironically, way too connected to the outside world, not mentally, but emotionally. I know it sounds like a paradox, but being able to access other realms will do that for you. They are for the most part not empathetic, but empaths. That means, they channel, intuit, and sense other people's emotions and like any empath, they do not know when they are dealing with others or their own. I believe this is an early struggle for all geniuses, sensitives, star seeds if you must. Especially because they have difficult lives, harsh upbringings, and not many safety nets to go back to, which in a sense lead them directly to their true path, no distractions. They don't have the same comforts as someone who is comfortable. Having said that, others' emotions and mundane matters, may come as strong distractions and energetic disturbances, for a genius, who is so fixated on an idea or a goal, that he or she will change their entire life structure in favor of the work. If that means living in a mountain, drinking whiskey, and fishing for the rest of his or her days, just to have the perfect environment for creation, it will happen. Side note, this is not to suggest in any shape or form, that creativity has to do with drinking or drugs, but when it comes to sorting that puzzle, the genius will use all and any of the resources at his or her disposal. Now let's talk about that untapped potential and why geniuses have a higher calling, behind all of these societal hardships they go through. For starters, a genius carries a very delicate balance within. He or she knows the polarity and equal value of both steady focus and daydreaming. Juggling between the different states of feeling and consciousness, allows for answers to come about in the most unexpected places. He or she is a neurotic in the sense of discipline and self-expression, all states are acknowledged and intertwined with the work they are carrying out. Intuition is deeply sacred, for a genius knows that nothing is random, and nothing is just because it is. This means acknowledging all the states, including the strife, the frustration, the sabotage, etc., which from an outside perspective can seem, for other people, like a genius is highly self-destructive because he or she is connected to the shadow self in a very integrated way. Having spoken about all the oddities and benefits of a highly creative person, let me tell you how a genius finally embraces its true potential. Apart from the discomfort of always being the misfit in social situations, the genius finally recognizes that he or she is different in one of the most precious ways. This is why they are finally compelled to stop worrying about other people's approval and go ahead and create a space in the world just for themselves, because others simply do not get it. The resistance becomes a sweet surrender where creativity flourishes with no limits. You may be tempted to label this as a selfish act of self-entitlement, but actually it is one of the biggest contributions it makes. Geniuses teach us to venture into our own worlds and make the world a more unique and beautiful place, because it is all about honoring individuality. On the path of creating this space, that will also support the evolution of the work they are doing, they shed a lot of outside influence, people, commodities, etc., up to the point where they oftentimes, only find contentment and peace, in the company of their own thoughts and emotions. This is the moment, where the traits that separated them for so long from people, become their greatest source of strength, and they go from feeling lonely, to choosing the path of a lone wolf, massively changing currents of thoughts, birthing new worlds from old garages, and freeing people's individual creativity with paintings, inventions, books, ideas, whatever it is they were doing from their space of the universe, during all those years that they lost contact with the outside world and were being called crazy and unstable. So you see, 
a genius's loneliness is often a misrepresentation of the journey it has to take, in order to achieve excellence and completion. A genius needs time to grow their wings, isolation is thereby essential to the process of giving birth to oneself and their true gifts, which have been manifesting in subtle ways, all throughout their life, for he or she is a pioneer, and was meant to lead, not to follow. If you dig it, join me on my other portals. Best, the Queen of Duality, Laura.